I'm not, you know, particularly trained as a filmmaker. I studied literature, and so I feel like I'm really lucky every time a story finds me. I think there's a Venn diagram in my mind of what I think I might be able to communicate and what I think the industry that I work in will make. And if I can find any overlap, then my dog gets to keep eating. <laughs> What I, what I was gripped by was just the, the truth of the story, the fact that there was this secret torture program that our government did, our CIA did. And um, um, I certainly didn't know enough about it. So when I read the script and I started educating myself on it, I got more and more sort of involved in, um, in the importance of trying to tell it. Um, there's just so many things about it that are chilling. Um, we had, we hired these outside contractors to actually do the torture so that our own CIA employees technically weren't doing the waterboarding. Um, and the CIA, this report that the Senate Intelligence Committee managed to get out basically tells the story that torture doesn't work. And that's the important point of the whole thing, is that not only is it wrong to do on some moral, ethical level, but it's also, and illegal, but it doesn't work. It's ineffective. Actually, the, 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 the guy named Dennis McDonough, who you see is a Capitol Hill staffer at the beginning of the movie and then becomes Obama's chief of staff. And his job is, like a lot of politicians' jobs, is to keep both sides calm down enough for the, for the machine of government to function smoothly. He needs it to get out in a certain way to appease these certain people, and he needs it to be tamped down in a certain way to appease these other people so that everybody can get on with the business of running the, com the country, which is a huge business. It has, to, it has a lot of moving parts. I had no idea the, the depth of how awful this program was and the machinations that went into hiding it and trying to make it seem legal. And, and the idea that, you know, that, that torture works somehow is, is it's a sexy idea because we see it on 24 and you see it on James Bond and you see it in these places. But it's only sexy if you're not the one that it's being done to or the person that's actually having to carry it out. Those are the people that carry the incredible psychic and tra traumatic scars for the rest of their lives. One of the first meetings I had with Scott was like, I want Dan Jones making my food. I want a Dan Jones, you know, driving my car, you kind of hope that um, these are these people who have such conviction, um, a moral conviction that are locked in a room somewhere uh, against whatever uh, odds they have against, you know, whatever odds are stacked against them, whether it be, you know, uh, in, in this case, him being inundated with such information, people just assuming that he wasn't going to go through it, but, but sitting and going through every line by line you know, with millions of documents, you kind of hope those people exist in the world. So I felt very fortunate to be a part of it and very lucky.